Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and today I'm going to go over how I would start investing in real estate if I was starting over in today's market. I'm going to show you how I would look for houses, what type of properties that I would look for, and some things to watch out for as well. And we'll talk about just some general strategy and why it can be so amazing to invest in real estate. And I wish I would have done many of these things when I was younger, but I still did okay. I just count, I think I have 33 rentals and 87 units, um, and that doesn't count our flips. So I've done pretty good over the years, but I could have gotten started much earlier, and real estate is just one of the best ways to build wealth. All right, so I'm on Zillow and looking at Greeley, Colorado here, which is where I'm at, just to look at some houses and kind of show you how to search too. Now I'm a real estate agent, real estate broker, so I can go to my MLS and search and it's actually way easier for me. I can see more houses, houses that are under contract, houses that are sold. You can see some of that on Zillow, but not always all of it. I can also filter things much easier and quickly. So there definitely is an advantage to having an agent or being an agent for sure. Um, me as an investor, being a broker, I can go look at a house without an agent, um, write an offer that same day or sooner. You know, Sometimes we write offers in an hour after seeing a property. Really gives me an advantage. Uh, but if you are looking for a house, you're looking for a good deal, make sure you have a really, really good agent working for you who's available, connect fast. That's one of the keys to doing this. So um, this is Greeley. I just searched for Greeley on Zillow. Anybody can do this. That's why I use this site. But you can see it kind of restricts you to just Greeley. There's also Evans, LaSalle, some other towns around here. So we could remove that boundary. and It'll give us everything. But we probably don't want everything because you probably are looking in a, probably a smaller area than all of this. And what I'm looking for if we go let's do that right there basically the strategy here is to buy as an owner occupant you're probably just getting started you don't have a lot of money um, that's what I would have done when I was first starting out and the reason you buy as an owner occupant is you can get an FHA loan with three and a half percent down a VA loan if you've been in the military um, for zero down USDA loan if you want to get a rural property that's not in this town but outside of the town a little bit those are zero down there's so many different programs out there there's um, down payment assistance in Colorado through Chaffa, which will help you pay that three and a half percent down. If you can't pay for it, you can ask the seller to cover closing costs because you'll probably have another three percent in closing costs. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. And I also wrote a book, How to Buy a House, that goes over all of this as well. It's on Amazon. There's lots of information in it um, if you prefer to read or you think I'm going too fast. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but the owner occupant route allows you to buy a house with less money down. If you're buying straight, Strictly as an investor, you're probably putting 20% down, maybe even 25% down. That's a lot of money when houses are three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, right? So if you can buy with less, that's it. Makes it much easier to get into the game. And a lot of people will tell you, well, you can't buy as an owner occupant. That's illegal. It is illegal if you never live there. That is 100% true. And I am not advocating you pretend to be an owner occupant. But the vast majority of owner occupied loans say you have to live in the property a year. If you live there a year, you satisfy the owner occupant. Um, requirement you can rent the house after that you can also rent the house or a multi-family property while you live there as well there's no restrictions on that so um, if a lender or someone tells you you can't do it you have to live there forever or sell or refinance ask them to show you in writing in the loan documents where it says that because I have people come at me all the time and say that's illegal you're committing fraud you have to live there forever or you have to refinance and I ask them show me in the loan documents the clause that says that and nobody has ever been able to show it to me so if it's not in writing you know it's probably not true but when you buy as an owner occupant like I said, you can live there a year. You could rent out your basement, rent out bedrooms, making sure it's okay with zoning. And Colorado just changed their zoning laws statewide to pretty much allow that. And um, you could buy a two to four unit as well, live in one unit, rent out the other units. Most, in fact, almost all owner occupied loans will limit you to four units or less. So you won't be able to do this if you're buying a 20 unit or 10 unit, anything like that. Um, 
but it's a great way to get started, especially if you get a deal, take your time and look for a, a sweet property. <laughs> uh, when we're looking for houses, there's a lot of things we can do for sale, for rent. You can't look at some souls, they have some comps. You can put in prices if you want, we're not gonna do that. You can put in bedrooms or baths if you want, we're not gonna do that. We can put in home types, we will do that because this is for me personally starting over. I wouldn't want a townhouse, I wouldn't want a condo, don't want an apartment. Just because they have HOAs, there's some more risk involved. Um, I don't want neighbors that close to me, this is me personally. I'm not saying you can't buy those, you can't make a good investment, but there's some pros and cons. I've got some other videos and resources on that if you're interested in looking at that. Now, manufactured homes. Manufactured homes are properties that have been brought in on a trailer, assembled. I shy away from those two. We've flipped for some manufactured homes. They're tricky. Their resale is not as good. Um, sometimes if you're in the country, maybe it makes more sense. There's more manufactured homes out there. But typically, I stay away from those myself. So I'm just looking at houses. Apply that. And then there's some more stuff you can add on here. Coming soon means it's not for sale yet but it will be in the next day or three or so. Um, accepting backup, backup offers means it's already under contract. So another buyer has submitted an offer, it's been accepted, they're going through the escrow process. They're doing their inspection, their appraisal, etc., to see if they can um, make that deal go through. And they might be taking a backup offer, which means you can submit an offer, but it won't be in place or won't go through unless the first offer cancels. Uh, pending it under contract means they aren't taking backup offers, it's still going through the escrow process. Um, you can talk about tours, you can put all kinds of square footage, garage, all kinds of things in here. Now, I wouldn't limit yourself to a bunch of different stuff because there's just not that many houses for sale unless you're looking in a huge area. And if you want to get a good deal, you want to be flexible, right? There's some sacrifices you're making if you want to be a real estate investor, you want to get ahead in life. If you want a five bedroom, four bath house in one neighborhood that needs no work, it's going to be really, really hard to get a good deal. It's going to be really hard to make that a rental that cash flows. There's a lot of different things to look at. And that's something else you want to consider is if you're turning an owner occupied, owner occupied property into a rental, will it make money? Will it cash flow after you move out? Um, I have other videos and other articles in my blog, investformore.com, my book, Build a Rental Property Empire, that goes into all of that as well. There's so many different things that go into this, but this is just kind of an overview strategy of what I would do. All right, so we have some houses here now, and then we can sort here. Homes for you, it gives you what they think are kind of the best deals for you. You can go price, low to high, newest bedrooms, etc. We're just going to go low to high. Um, don't know what that is. Those aren't what we're looking for. New construction, zero price. Um, here's our first house. Now this is why it's nice to have a realtor who can come through and give you some insights and ideas on why prices might be low or what's going on, what to watch out for, what to look for. This house is super cheap. There's a reason. It's connected to a commercial property. This is also for sale. It's sort of a good deal, but um, not good enough for me to look at it. This really decreases the value of a property when it's literally connected to the commercial property. Now you don't have to buy the commercial property. You can buy it separate, but you see how they cut off the picture right here because it literally, the wall is attached. That really decreases the value when you have a situation like that. Um, something you really want to be careful with and that's why it's been for sale for a very long time and they keep lowering the price here's one um i believe that's a half duplex because they're being creative with their picture again so if we scroll through <laughs> they uh try and oh you can kind of see there how long that is that's because that's one side this is one side again these can be okay deals but if you have a half duplex, just realize the value is going to be a lot lower than a single family home because you're sharing a wall with your neighbor. Um, so that's something to watch out for too. This one, pretty low price. It's only a two bedroom. It only has 672 square feet. That's something to look out for too. If you have these really small houses, they can be hard to sell. I'm not saying they're bad investments, but just for me personally, that'd be something to give me pause. Now, if we go back to 2010, 2008, I could have bought that house for 40,000. You can see it's worth 
250 now, we'll just say. Obviously, it went up an incredible amount. It actually went up more than the bigger houses. <laughs> so if you're looking at extremely cheap houses and you think your market might take off again, you never know for sure, they can still be good investments, right? So there's so many different ways to invest in real estate. There's so many good um, ways to do it. I don't want to lock you into this is what you have to do and this is the only way to do it. But for me personally, I would want just a little bigger one because now, you know, before like maybe this was 40,000, maybe a bigger, nicer house was 100,000, right? There's a 40, you know, this property is 40% of the other house's value. That's a big difference. Well, now maybe a little nicer house is 320,000, 330,000 is still kind of the same price difference, but now it's like 70, 80% of the value. So there's a much smaller um, percent difference. So in the future, to me, that means, well, there's less potential for that huge, massive gain you had before. And I can get a nicer, bigger house for not that much more money in the grand scheme of things. All right. Um, another one. That's not awful. But, uh, you know, it's a lot bigger. So just looking from that, you know, standpoint, you know, location matters too. Again, realtors can't be real specific on what location is better than others. And we shouldn't say that at all because it's considered steering, but that's something the buyer should consider location and research on their own. But like this is 988 square feet versus 672, only a $6,000 difference. All things being equal, the bigger house is a much better deal. But like they said, there's location, there's condition, there's other things to consider. Another very small house. It's been for sale for a while. Again, something to look out for. But I think that one has a larger lot. Again, a lot to consider. Um, two bedroom, one bath with 1,200 square feet. And it's redone. And you might look at this and be like, well, this might have, you know, some potential if it has a basement unfinished we'll click on this one and see just because it's got more square footage it's in pretty decent shape i know i don't mind houses that need lots of work but other people might not want to put in that elbow grease and work and you can still get a good deal even if a house does need um or sorry doesn't need much work all right let's see what the description says on this welcome to your new home Downtown Greeley, uh, laundry room in the downstairs area, detached garage. So what I'm wondering here is there's 1,280 square feet. It looks very, very small. So I'm guessing there's a basement. I'm wondering if that basement's finished or not, what's down there. And this is where if I'm an agent, I can go see a lot of the, that details and information and see what's going on. So that might be one. I'd just be interested in looking at say, hey, if I could finish the basement, add some square footage, maybe there's some value there. Um, this one's very small. Oh, look at this, 1,900 square feet, 299,000. Now this is the kind of deal you're like, this might be worth over 400. There's a reason I actually looked at this house the other day. Now, for an owner occupant who's really willing to put in some elbow grease, this could be a good deal. Honestly, I would want to get it for less than this. This is a cat house. It smells awful. I thought I was going to pass out a little bit being inside of it. You might have to tear out the subfloor, the walls, everything to get that smell out. It's not just a little bit. It's everywhere. You can see the outside needs tons of work. Um, this house is rough. If you don't know what you're doing and you're an owner occupant and jumping into a deal with this much work can be really bad. Now, if you know what you're doing, you have some experience, it might be okay, but you could literally go into this and spend $100,000 remodeling it, not really knowing the cost and what's going to happen or good contractors. All of a sudden, you've just spent as much money as it takes to as buying a nice house without going through all the work and hassle of repairing a house. So if it was, and you, you'll see deals like this sometimes that aren't cat houses that need cosmetics, other work, that's really what you're looking for. This one is a little risky, but they told me they had offers coming in. I still don't know if I believe them. <laughs> um, a very small house. These are condos, townhouses. They shouldn't have come in that search, but they did. Um, not bad, kind of a small house. That one looks tiny. It's got to have a basement. 
that's something to consider too. So we're still looking 1484 square feet. It's okay. It's nice. Still not an amazing deal. It's an okay deal. Um, so you can go through here and really what I'm trying to do when I'm buying as an owner occupant for the first time is I'm considering what it might rent for. Like I said, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother discussion. But I'm also want to get a really good deal. Everything I buy, everything I buy now, I want a 70 to 80 percent of what it's worth, and that's after considering the repairs I have to make too. I want to deduct those repairs from from the price as well to make sure I'm getting a really good deal. It makes no sense to buy a house for three hundred thousand, put fifty thousand dollars of work into it, and then it's worth three hundred fifty thousand. You're much much better off just buying a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. What you want is a house that's worth three hundred fifty thousand. You buy it for two fifty, and you put fifty thousand of work in, or you get an even better deal than that. You want it, there has to be some benefit for doing the work and going through the hassle because things can go wrong. All right, we're gonna keep looking. Um, this one, this one is not awful. It's a little bigger, four bedrooms, two baths, and we can see the photos. 335, now as an agent with experience, I know that that seems like it's actually priced a little lower than it should be. Maybe there's a reason. Okay, the doors are kind of old. Windows, I can't tell if those are old or not. Kitchen's pretty outdated, okay. Um, but it's got hardwood floors, the hardwood looks decent. Oh, is that like an addition? That almost looks like an addition off the back. Interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's got a basement, needs flooring obviously. Um, bathrooms probably are a little outdated. So this one isn't a bad deal, and maybe you can get a little lower. Um, but it's something you could live in right now, probably. And then over time, fix it up, work on it, and build some equity. This house, if it was in really good shape, is probably worth 380 to 400. 400 might be pushing it because it's a little small. It's only 800 square feet on each floor. Probably 380. So you've got some room there and it's not a ton of work. And it's work you could do while you live there. And you might be able to get it a little bit cheaper. This is the kind of property I would be looking for. Now hopefully you get an even better deal on one, but this is just a possibility. Um, so that's one I would be like, hey, that's one I definitely wanna go see. Maybe there's some room to make it better. And then I come, I'm like, oh, look at this one, 335, 2354 square feet. Okay, uh, let's see what this one looks like. A little outdated, not bad. Looks like it has an addition too. Basement's finished and pretty decent. Oh, it's even got a floor plan, look at that. Agents doing their job. Um, we try to do that on our listings too. Now here's where it's really nice to have an agent who can help you with this though. This is on 13th Street. That's a pretty busy road. It's a main road, it's not four lanes, it's only two lanes, but it's a very busy road. This will drastically impact your value. It still might be a good enough deal for someone that's worth doing it, but it's really important to consider what busy roads do and value and agents can help you with that. So for me, I probably like, I don't wanna be on that busy of a road. That's not for me, but some people might be okay with it, but there's a reason why it's a little cheaper. Still might be a good deal, but there's all kinds of things to consider here. Um, pretty small, just a thousand square feet. This one's interesting. So we mentioned you can buy a single family house how house <laughs> or um, by multifamily sometimes that's called house hacking this has multiple units five bedroom two bath 1910 square feet 338,000 now it's old it might need some work but I've actually been looking at this house kind of keeping an eye on it to see if the price keeps going lower it's got like a little shed not very useful carport but it's real close to the college. So it could be a college rental, which is has some pros and cons to it. But um, let's see, first time buyers, let's rental income. So we've got three bedrooms, one bath on the main and upper levels. The basement is fully equipped, separate unit with two bedrooms, one bath, its own kitchen. So the current, that main house currently rents for 1400, the basement unit brings in 900. Now there's some rules and it varies by state where if you're buying as an owner occupant, you might be able to end a tenant's lease early. 
ethically is that great maybe not but you could come in give them 90 days in some areas sometimes less and say hey i'm gonna live in this property sorry you've got to find another place to live don't know if i personally want to do that but depending on when their lease is up you know maybe their lease is up in a couple months anyway you could buy the house, wait for them to move out, and then you do have some time with the owner-occupant loans before you have to move in. Of course, talk to your lender about that, where you can move into the main unit, rent out the basement. You've got rent coming in right away, helps you make your mortgage payment, you live there a year, then once you move out, you could rent the entire place, probably cash flow on something like this, and get yourself a pretty good deal. Of course, you know you want to check the, con you know, have an inspection done, of course, check out all the things that could be wrong with it, things you can't see, all of that, but this could be a great deal for someone looking to house hack as well. So there's all kinds of possibilities here and we can keep going through them. I won't go through them for too much longer, but I hear a lot of people tell me, oh, there's no deals in my area. All the investors are buying them all up. There's nothing I can do. And that's just the narrative you hear from a lot of the national media, political parties. Um, when you actually look, there's deals everywhere. There's going to be deals everywhere. And owner occupants actually have an advantage over many investors with HUD homes, foreclosures, some other programs where they can put much less money down and they get the first look at some of these properties because HUD and some foreclosure um, banks give priority to owner occupants over investors. So it is not impossible. Investors are not buying all the houses. There's a lot of opportunity for owner occupants. Um, and this just shows some of them currently for sale right here in my area, which is a pretty competitive area with very few properties for sale. So if you're looking to get started investing in real estate, you think it's impossible, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's an opportunity out there, there's ways to buy properties with less than you think. Now take some sacrifice, right? Not everybody wants to live in what might be an investment property. Uh, a lot of times it's the smaller houses, lower priced homes that make the best rentals. Maybe you've got a multi-unit, um, different, you know, sharing a wall with someone. That, that's not easy for everybody, but sometimes you have to make sacrifices to get ahead in life. And some people might be saying, well, what's the difference between this property with two units and buying a duplex? Well, in a duplex, you just own half of it. Someone else owns the other half. You don't have any control over it. They might make their roof a different color. They might paint their house pink. They can actually do that in many instances. This, you own the whole house. You have control of everything. You have control of the rental, the, the tenants, all of that. You own the whole thing much, much better to go this route. All right, so hopefully that kind of helps you, gives you an idea of just like some basic strategy on getting started in real estate. Like I said, my books have much more information on the actual details and how to do it, all the loan information, um, even repair information, things like that, renting them, property management, and then I've got videos on pretty much every subject here as well if you want to see those. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And of course, we'll be back soon showing our actual rentals, flips, businesses, all of that as well. Well. Wow.